So we've already seen four games played in week 12 of the NFL season. Sunday features an 11 game slate with some interesting trends when you look at the spreads of the games. So it's time to talk about the best bets for Sunday's game, another edition of Hitting the Books. And we're going to do that with New York Post sports betting analyst, my guy, Eric Richter, who joins me now. Eric, how's it going, man? Bex, how we doing, man? Michigan just won. Woo! Yeah, yeah, the people who uh, were looking to cover the spread in that game, they were sweating that one out. We saw that yep. on the college football sides of things. We're going to talk about the league where they get paid to play. That is the NFL. And, Eric, when you look at the 11 games on Sunday as of right now, only one of the games has a line over four points. What do you make of the spreads that we're seeing this week, and what does that tell you about the NFL right now when it comes to betting? This is just the league telling you that anything can happen on any given week. They don't really know. Honestly, this is what it's telling you is they don't really know what uh, what could happen on any given week. Uh, you know, they've been burned on some bigger dogs. You think the Texans, you know, or their over under wind is one of the worst in the NFL. Um, you see the Texans really come out. They, they won a bunch of games as, as live underdogs. Um, and, you know, I think that the smaller spreads here, I think that they're actually kind of sharp on it. They're also not giving you good money line prices on three point dogs either. You know, you'll see like the Browns or you know, plus two two and a half underdogs, you're not going to get plus 110 on the money line. You know, back in the day, you used to be able to get a plus 130 and it actually be worth it. You know, now it's actually, all right, screw it. I'll take the two and a half. You know, when you go for two as much as as much as that's been happening in the league, lots of going for two, um, that kind of messes things up, especially when you're down two scores. Um, you, you know, make it an eight-point game or a six-point game, they usually go for the six-point game, and then that screws everything up. Um, so, you know, I think it's just the analytics of the game that have actually changed the way that they look at spreads. Um, you know, I mean, favorites are 81, 78, and 9, and underdogs are 78, 81, and 9. You know, it's 51, 49 right there. So, you know, against the spread, you know, favorites are hitting on a little bit of a higher clip, but not really. I mean, they're pretty much right on. Yeah, there's a couple <clears throat> ways of looking at it, right? Either there is a lot of parity or a lot of mediocrity. Either way you go, it, you said it, nobody knows what's going to happen. Any given Sunday, anything could happen, and you just don't want it to hurt your wallet. Uh, let's talk about the Giants here. They are back home hosting the Patriots this week. The G-Men, they're three-and-a-half-point road underdogs here. What's, excuse me, home underdogs here. What's your best bet for Pats versus Giants? I mean, you know, so before last week, I mean, talking about not thinking, thinking anything can happen, you know, Commanders is nine and a half point favorites. You know, they, they look terrible. And Tommy DeVito looks like, you know, he looks amazing. Three touchdown. You know, uh, prior to last week, I was, you know, all in. I was like, Patriots are going to win. Mac Jones is going to play quarterback. Now I have no idea who's going to play quarterback. I think it'd be crazy to bet the spread here. I don't think I don't know how you could bet either side of the spread. My model's not even giving value on it. They're saying it, the the spread is right on. Um, you know the 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 model that I have uh, running right now has is showing about three and a half percent edge on the over thirty three and a half. That's my official play um, with a projected score of twenty one to fourteen uh, on that end. I I just I for me this is an over spot. I think that Devito actually played pretty well, and the Giants defense stinks. Um, and I think that they're beatable in the run game as well. They're one of the lowest in DVOA on uh, run defense. So, uh, yeah, give me the give me the over 33 and a half. It's such a low number. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, last week the Steelers game went on, went under. Steelers Browns went under. It was one of the lowest totals ever. I think their uh, odds makers are getting a little too crazy with these low uh, low low totals. All right, so you like the over in that one. Also, no Dexter Lawrence in this contest between the Pats and the Giants on Sunday. We'll see how that one plays out. The Sunday night game has the NFC North leading, AFC North, excuse me, leading Ravens. They're only three-point favorites against the four and six Chargers. Now, look, Eric, you've backed the Ravens strongly in previous weeks. Is Baltimore getting disrespected here with the line, and, or are the Chargers getting too much love? So there's a lot of questions there. Are you backing Baltimore as home favorites oh. in Week 12? You will, you already know it, man. I know, I know, I know it. You've been you've been riding with Baltimore. I, I already know it. Yeah. I have to, man. That they're the one. They're they're number one in DVOA on the entire season. They have one of the best defenses in the league. And so here's a couple stats: um, the Ravens are playing a one of the best zone coverage secondaries in the NFL. Justin Herbert stinks against the zone. He gets absolutely roasted. Man coverage, he actually is one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, but zone coverage, his QBR is in the 80s. It's you know bottom half of the league. And for Justin Herbert, you don't think of him as a bottom half of the league quarterback. But against man coverage. 
He's one of the best in the league. Uh, Ravens play a lot of zone coverage. Their their pass their um, their excuse me pass rush is really good. Um, you know, I, I definitely take the Ravens here minus three. I, I don't trust that Chargers run defense even a little bit. I think Keaton Mitchell's awesome. I think Lamar Jackson could have a big game. I just don't see how three makes sense. I really don't. They're only four. Chargers are only four and a half point favorites against the Jets uh, Monday night. Uh, in that Monday night game, I don't, I just don't see how why they're getting so much respect. Chargers don't even have a home field advantage, so I don't even, I don't see the three points coming there either. Yeah, that line was a bit shocking to me. I was talking about it earlier with my director Joe. I was a little bit shocked at the line there. Thought that you get a little bit more points uh, to Baltimore there. It might be a little bit of a disrespect. So we'll we'll see there. Another intriguing Week 12 matchup has the six and five Bills visiting the nine and one Eagles. The Eagles, they're just three point home favorites. Over under for this one is it currently? At 48 and a half, are you rocking with the home team or are the Bills who've won two in a row? Are they primed to pull off the road upset? Yeah, I saw that. I saw Stefan Diggs' his Instagram stories. It seems like he doesn't really trust Josh Allen. It seems like no one really trusts trust Josh Allen on that team. Um, you know, that's that's a big problem. It's it, for me. This should have the, the spread should be six. Is the way that I I handicapped it pre week. Um, it's only at three and a half right now. Um, I would definitely lean Eagles. I don't really see. I mean, look, the Eagles have only lost one game this year, and it was to the Jets. Again, anything can happen any given week. Yeah, I, I haven't bet the spread. Um, if I were to bet it, I would take the under 48 and a half. I think that number's too high. Um, and I, I, I see a cold affair in Philly. I see a, a run first attitude by both teams. Um, and I, I, you know, anything can happen any given week. I'm not I'm not betting the spread, but I'll definitely take the total. I think 48 and a half is one of the biggest of the week, and I'll, I'll definitely take under there. I think both these defenses are very solid, um, and they they will they can clog things up in the middle pretty good. It, it could be a pun fest. Well, look, this is what we set up at the top of the show. We talk about these spreads. You see why you want to stay away, because a lot of them just being so low, you don't know what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, some people will be enticed to bet against the spread. We'll see how that goes. Last thing for me, Eric, uh, what are a couple player props that you're eyeing as the best plays for Week 12? So uh, anyone that's been following my uh, weekly player props picks, um, you know, they know that I'm I'm, I'm a long shot guy. You know what I mean? I I see some value and I'll, I'll ladder it up. So um, for me, I'm doing oh, I'm doing Jalen Warren over 48 and a half rushing yards. It was 47 and a half when it opened. Some money's coming in. So at 48 and a half. Um, you know, I'm going to ladder that all the way up. Last week, he would rush for 129. I had him to rush for 100 yards at 15 to 1 last week, and I hit that. It would be borderline sacrilegious of me to, as a Jalen Warren guy, to not like uh, bet him against the Bengals' run defense, which allows five yards to carry, and then the Browns' defense rounds three yards to carry. He rushed for 129 against the Browns. I got to go. With uh, Jalen Warren, it's uh, 15 to 1 for him to rush for 125. So you got a little bit of a higher number there this week. Um, the last one that I had was Cooper Cup, who annihilated the Cardinals earlier this year. 148 yards receiving against the Cardinals earlier this week, earlier this season. The Cardinals are the worst deep passing uh, secondary in the NFL. Get this. They allow a 58% completion percentage on passes traveling more than 20 yards in the air. Worse than the NFL. Terrible. The and Cooper Cup's average yards per target is 2.9. It's top, it's 15th in the league. Um, long, longest yards per target. So I'll take Cooper Cup. I'm gonna ladder it all the way up. I think 150 uh, yards on Bet 365 was um, was 16 to one. That's a. I mean, he almost did it. He almost did it earlier this year. 16 to one. Come on, that's ridiculous. Um, yeah, give me Cooper Cup all day. He's done it. Cardinals defense is terrible. And this is going to be a shootout. There's going to be a reason to score because Kyler Murray is actually good. There you go. Laddering up with a couple player props there. Got Jalen Warren, got Cooper Cup, and my guy, Eric Richter, he's been killing it with the NFL player props this year thus far. He peep the numbers. He's been, he's been doing his thing on that right there. That is Eric Richter, sports betting analyst for the New York Post, always doing a great job of breaking it down for us on Hitting the Books. Eric, enjoy the games this weekend. We'll talk soon. Have some big tickets, baby. Appreciate go. it. No problem, man.